Is the Rodney King, which you might say, the straw that broke the camel's back. But there was one other case before that, was it not? Natasha Harlan. Who was that? She was a 13-year-old uh, juvenile who was accused of shoplifting in a Korean liquor store. And she was shot in the back of the head and killed. To add insult to that, the lady who shot and killed her was given less than a slap on the wrist, asked her to pay for the funeral, and gave her probation. I mean, this is like a state of siege in some areas. And this is one of the areas where there's a state of siege going on. So this is, um, originally, it was more like a political rebellion. Over there in the downtown area where I was at after about five, six hours after the verdicts came down, symbols of, um, of oppression and racism were attacked, like the police department, city hall, the LA Times. You can see here, once it spread over here, it was more um, an economic rebellion. I think people wanted to take things uh, because they didn't have anything. And this is one of the first places that it hit it. When it, when it. Once it started spreading, it started right here. And you see the fire and the people and the looters. Uh, it's really uh, very real, definitely. I was expecting you guys to help and let me down. Uh, I ain't gonna get in there too. <laughs> She's playing in Popo. <laughs> Where are you from? Boston. From Boston, huh? Right. What do you think about this National Guard soldiers here? I own the store here. Yeah. And I was here for two days with my wife and family. Some employees and friends, and we stood right out here. And we kept hundreds of looters away from coming into our store. How? We talk to them. Number one, everyone in the neighborhood knows us. We're highly visible, and we work in the community. We've been doing that for five years. We're extremely active in the community. They respect us, they work with us, and kept the looters away. And the outsiders, we intimidated them with whatever was necessary. And they got the message. They burned everything down, looted everything around here, but they did not touch our store. We're extremely fortunate. Last night, we did not have a shotgun. You got the right one, baby. Last night, you didn't have a shotgun. No, last night, we had no shotgun. We had no guns in here. The only thing we had were these. Wow, last night. It's crazy last night. There, the, the only reason that this 7-Eleven is still here is because we're out here. What kind of shotgun is that? OK, this is a Mossberg. It's a riot gun is what it is, you know, controlling, you know, right situations. I didn't have to return fire on anybody, but I had it for my own protection. Would you if you had to? If well if it came down to you know my life where somebody was you know gonna take my life, I, I wouldn't hesitate. I would not hesitate. What do you think caused this whole thing? Uh, people are blaming the Rodney King thing, but it's not because the majority of people who are looting these places are thugs. They're just flat out low lives. They I bet they don't even know who Rodney King is or what happened. The stuff I shot on film were people, um, I have a couple people that went back four or five times for trips into this store. I shot uh, trucks loading up um, just their trunk full of boxes and guys carrying dollies out and the 7-Eleven got hit next door, people running with six packs. Uh, just every, the funny thing it was everyone seemed to be smiling. It was, everybody was in a good mood, jovial. Everybody had a smile on their face walking away with stuff and walking to it. That was the bizarre factor of it, you know, it wasn't like, uh, hey, we're going to stand up for this guy and this verdict thing. I, I don't think anybody was thinking about that at the time. Uh, once the political anger took over for the first 24 hours, the next 24 hours, they seem to target the electronic stores and the jewelry, the jewelries, and a lot of uh, Korean-owned uh, stores. That's. Um, who they targeted, and they definitely hit them a lot. Why are the Korean stores there? Well, because the, the, the Koreans have a reputation, and I'm generalizing, and you can't generalize because it's very dangerous, but a lot of them, not all of them, a lot of, a lot of them do not treat people, customers, with respect. They treat them like crap. They believe that every time a black person or a Mexican person goes to the store, they're going in to rob, so they, they, they treat them like thieves. Koreans have never been a part of the community. I know a lot of the business owners, but it is a fact they're just not a part of the community. They don't understand to this day why they were selected. They still do not understand that the community resents their attitude, resents their arrogance, 
resents the fact that they are not a part of the community. It's okay to do business in the community and live outside of it, but you cannot separate yourself from it. A lot of stuff seems to be directed at Korean stores. Yep. Why? Uh, I think it's the gap. It's from the gap between uh, races, especially black and Koreans. Excuse me. Can yes. we speak to you? You gentlemen have businesses in the swap meet here? Uh, just me. Uh-huh. Yeah. And was your business destroyed? Oh, yeah, completely. How do you feel about what happened? Well, my wife was passed out a couple of times. I went out to the Korean uh, the marching yesterday. You guys remember yes. about 100,000 people was present. Right. I was there marching together. I was crying myself. See, there's so many burnout buildings outside the street. You know, we're not against any nations, nationalities, you know, right. like uh, even uh, American Africans, you know, uh, Hispanics. Either, you know, any nationalities. I never hated. We work together like you see the other nations here. But why? It wasn't enough security guards. It was only two security guards that it's also our complaint. Why they didn't put enough security guards? They focus on they focus on protecting basically the uh, the people with money. And that's basically what it is. It's all about, you know, the dollar bill. If you got the money, you uh, you're being protected. And they'll uh, They'll overlook situations. I've been over in MacArthur Park over there at uh, Rampart where they, they'll, let, they'll basically let the, the Mexicans uh, basically sell right there in the park. I mean, anybody can see, everybody can see it. But then they, right here on the corner right here, they clean that corner up. They, they, they make sure that corner's clear. It's just so much you can say, you know? Things get under control. You think it's pretty peaceful right now? We believe it is. Are you United States military? No, no we have nothing to do with the military. We're U.S. Department of Justice. What, what, what? Branch of the Department of Justice. Federal Bureau of Prisons. Your so prison guards? Yes, sir. Are you just kind of assigned to help out here and do security, or do you have a specific purpose? Are you looking for people, or what? Just helping out. Just helping out? Do you think this show of force has had a calming influence? I mean, you think this makes a difference, the fact that there are just so many of you guys just visible out here? You know, the best people to get that information from you, Terminal Island, California, uh -huh. call the um, Bureau of Prisons. You. Terminal, um, Terminal Island, California, you got an AW answer. Any of those kind of questions. Well, what do you think? First, you've been walking around here. Do you see a difference? I mean, do you think that your presence is helping to keep a lid on things and keep the streets safe? I feel the community's been real good to us. They stop, they talk to us, and they Did feel they, a lot better. Are they telling you that they're glad that you're oh, yeah. here? Oh, yeah. We get a lot of thank yous and okay. stuff like that. Huh? We like that, and we enjoy to hear that. Is this your first time here in uh, Los Angeles? No, I'm from Long Beach originally. My hometown, a lot of family here in L.A. And you're a prison official, right? Yeah. With the U.S., let me just take up that thing. Department of Justice. That's okay. All right. from the neighborhood? No. Where are you from? I'm from Northern California. Have you been involved in an operation like this before? Riot situation at all, first time? That we're going to leave alone. That one we'll leave alone. Okay. Actually, I'm coming up here to try to buy a camera. Look at me. You know, what is it normal for you to be walking the street like this? This is the first time. Well, it depends on the situation. It depends on my vacation or not. You usually carry a gun and a helmet on vacation? Sometimes. Sometimes? It depends on the mood. It depends on where you're going, I suppose. What you saw there was a U.S. gang. They talk about gang members in this uh, city, and I defy you to tell me the difference between gang members and these guys. They certainly dress nice, they dress the same, they have the same mannerisms, and, uh, and they have, but in this case, they have the power on their side. Police accountability, administrative accountability, everybody's, you, you call this an uprising. Yes. Other people have called it uh, rebellion. Uh, some people have called it a riot. Why do you call it? Well, I, I would call it an uprising. I would agree with uh, rebellion, uh, but I'd be damned if we can consider this a riot. I think if you look at the, the black community, if you look at the Latino community, uh, the white community that participated, we were trying to send a clear message to this city and to the nation that we are not going to sit idly by and be beat down. They're talking about being calm before we are beat during the beating, after the beating, and when the convictions uh, 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 come down of, uh, I mean, and when the officers are found not guilty, then they want us to be tranquil. We'll say we're not going to uh, sit by and uh, be tranquil. 
We weren't tranquil before, during, and after. I think tranquility comes about when there's justice. And what we're telling them is that if we don't get any justice, this damn city, and this damn state, this damn country will not get any peace.